Welcome to our 10th Mathematics tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at numerical integration using the midpoint rule, trapezoidal rule, and Simpson's rules. The function we're looking to integrate is 2 plus 2x plus x squared plus the sine of 2 pi times x plus the cos of 2 pi times x over 0.5. And just so that we can see what it looks like, let's go ahead and plot it. x going from 0 to 1.5 and let's also integrate it so that we have a value to compare with. Now the syntax for the integrate function is integrate the function the variable the minimum boundary and the max boundary. So we'll set it as C, and we'll integrate f of x, where x goes from 0 to 1.5. Now shift enter. Here's our graph, and our exact derivative is 6.69331. The first method we'll take a look at is the midpoint rule. Now the midpoint rule approximates the integral using rectangles with a width h and a height that is the average of the current point and the previous point. Now let's start off by defining our function for the midpoint rule. We'll call this function im. We'll start off with the function we want to integrate, the beginning of our interval, the end of our interval, and the number of rectangles we want. Now the width of our integrals our endpoint minus our starting point divided by the number of rectangles we want. And now let's set up the sum. So the sum essentially follows this format over here. So we want f at this value over here. We'll need to include the beginning of our interval, then the average of the current and previous points. So our iterator i times the step size minus the step size plus i times the step size, all divided by 2. Then multiplying by the width. and taking i from 1 to n. And now let's test the function. i m of f going from 0 to 1.5 with 15 rectangles. Now shift enter. And we see that we get very close with our estimate. We can improve the accuracy of the derivative by increasing n, which would decrease the width of the rectangles in a given interval. To see this in action, let's use the table function. So we'll call this the variable t, and we'll set up a table. Our first column will be n, and it'll go by the powers of 10. 
So n is equal to 10 to the power of i minus 1. Then we'll show the width h, which in this case is 1.5 over n. Then we'll evaluate the integral. va equals im of f from 0 to 1.5 with n rectangles. And finally, we'll display our absolute error. So the absolute value of c minus va. And we'll take i from 1 to 4. We'll put this in matrix form just to see it better. Shift enter. And we see we get closer and closer to the actual integral as we increase the number of rectangles. Now let's move on to the trapezoidal rule. Now we'll scroll back up to the plot that we made earlier. Now the trapezoidal rule relies on linearly interpolating between points and then finding the area of the resulting trapezoids. Now let's say we had an n of 3. So that would mean that we want to split this into three portions then linearly interpolate between those portions and find the areas of these trapezoids now scrolling back down Let's make our function. We'll have the same inputs, our function, start of the interval, end of the interval, and number of trapezoids, and our formula for the step size stays the same. The end of the interval minus the start of the interval divided by the number of trapezoids we want. And the only thing we really need to change is the sum. So this time, our sum is h over 2 times f of xi minus 1 plus f of xi. So we can program f of xi minus 1 by typing the f of a plus i times h minus h. Because we need to start from the beginning of the interval add a set number of step sizes and subtract one step size and plus f of the start of the interval plus a certain number of step sizes i will go from 1 to n and we'll multiply the whole thing by h over 2. now testing this with our function again it with f going from 0 to 1.5 with 15 trapezoids. Now shift enter. And we're a little further than the midpoint rule. So let's see how this progresses as we change n. So t2, we'll do the same thing as earlier and create a table. n is the powers of 10. We need to include the width. Then we'll evaluate the integral according to the trapezoidal rule. And we'll display the absolute error. And we'll take i from 1 to 4. Now take the matrix form and shift enter. Now as we can see here, our absolute error when we have 1000 trapezoids is about 1 to the power of negative 6. If we scroll up, our midpoint rule has an absolute error of 8.9 to the power of negative 7. So the midpoint rule in this case is still slightly more accurate than the trapezoidal rule. Now finally, let's take a look at Simpson's rule, which are divided into the 1 rule and the 3 rule.
I'll quickly paste our plot down here. Now the Simpsons rule consists of the one-third rule and the three-eighths rule. In Simpsons one-third rule, the interval a to b is divided into n amount of subintervals. Then a midpoint is found within these subintervals. Then the points in each interval are interpolated using the method of Lagrange polynomials. As a result, in each subinterval, we're integrating polynomials. Now in Simpson's 3 eighths rule on the other hand, each subinterval contains two intermediate points. So now instead of integrating parabolas, the interpolated polynomials are cubic and we're integrating cubic curves instead. And my drawings aren't the best, but you get the idea. Now we'll start off with Simpson's one-third rule. As we did before, we'll define our function and in inputs. So we'll call this IS1, which has F, beginning of the interval, end of the interval, and the number of subintervals we want. Now, since each subinterval contains two smaller intervals, we can make the width of each smaller intervals H. And so the length of each subinterval will be 2h. And since the width of each subinterval is equal to b minus a over n, and we have our subintervals equal to 2h, our step size h is equal to b minus a over 2n. This will just make our lives easier for the sum, since we have an f of xi minus 1, and then an f of xmi, which is the midpoint, and finally an f of xi, which is the current point. So h is b minus a over 2n. And now let's create our sum. So we need f of xi minus 1, which is f of our starting point, plus i minus 1 times the width of our subinterval 2h, plus 4f of the midpoint, which is a, plus 2i minus 1 times h, and finally, plus f of x at the end of our interval, which is our starting point, plus i times the length of the subinterval 2h. And i goes from 1 to n, and we're multiplying the whole thing by h over 3. Now we'll test it and make our table. So is1, we'll input the function, taking the interval from 0 to 1.5 with 15 subintervals. And t3 will be our table with the powers of 10 and our step size, which is now 1.5 over 2n, 
and the value of our integral our absolute error and i going from 1 to 4 get that in matrix form and now shift enter and now we get extremely close with just a hundred subintervals having a greater accuracy than the midpoint rule. Now let's take a look at Simpson's 3 8 rule. So just as we discussed earlier, instead of having a single midpoint, the Simpson's 3 8 rule has two midpoints. And instead of integrating parabolas in each subinterval, we're integrating cubic functions. And just to save some time, let's just go ahead and copy and paste all of this and make our modifications. call this IS2 and now this time each subinterval includes three smaller intervals and if we set each of these smaller intervals to H the length of our entire subinterval is 3H and we're doing this for simplicity once again, just to make our lives easier when we have to program x of li and x of ri. So now this becomes b minus a over 3n. And now the beginning of our subinterval is i minus 1 times our new subinterval length 3h plus 3 times f of the beginning of our subinterval plus 3i's minus 2 in order to get our x of li and then plus 3f of a plus 3i minus 1 times h in order to get our f of xri and a plus i times 3h in order to get our xi and this time we're multiplying by 3 times h over 8. And we'll change this to IS2 and this to IS2. And this will be T4. And we'll take the matrix form of T4. Now shift enter. And we get almost the exact interval right off the bat just by using the 3 8 rule with 15 subintervals. So we just finished looking at four different methods we can use for numerical integration. These methods are great for approximating definite integrals for functions that may be difficult or even impossible to integrate by hand. The more subintervals n we have, the more accurate our integrals become. So to review, the midpoint rule uses rectangles, the trapezoidal rule uses linear functions, Simpson's one-third rule uses parabolas, and Simpson's three-eighths rule uses cubic functions. That's it for this tutorial. As always, good luck with your labs.